Hello, Garstor here, and this is a re-recording of my second YouTube video that was originally uploaded on December 5. In this video, I'm going to explain the basics of using the HEDIS software UV Layout program. When you launch UV Layout, you're presented with this win window. Each of these sections here is a menu and can be expanded by clicking on it or contracted by re-clicking on it. Typically, I will keep all of these uh, compressed down and to preserve screen space. And I will only have one or two open at any given moment. In order to load a mesh into UV layout, you need to be using the OBJ file format. So I'm going to open up the primitives OBJ file here. You can choose whether your mesh is subdivided or polygonal and you can choose whether or not you wish to make new UVs or edit any existing UVs. These other options here uh, are only used when UV layout has problems reading the mesh um, and will typically only happen with uh, highly complicated uh, meshes. When you load a mesh, UV layout opens up a second floating window here. So these two windows uh, compromise the uh, UI of the program. And I will typically make this full screen. This is the edit view of UV layout. And there are three views. If you expand the display menu, the three views are UV, edit, and 3D. So when you first load a mesh, you start in the edit view. As you make cuts on your, on your meshes here and drop the shells down into the UV space, you can then move to the UV room. If I try to move there now, it tells you that there's nothing in UV. The 3D view looks very similar to the edit view. This will only be important to you later on after you've started flattening some of your meshes. So for now, we're going to return to the edit view. The fast shortcuts for these three views are the one, two, and three keys. So the one key sends you to the UV view. The two key brings you to the edit view. The three key brings you to the 3D view. You can left mouse click and move your mouse around in order to orbit your view. And this works in the 3D view as well as the edit view. Middle mouse click and moving your mouse around translates the view. So you can move up and down and left to right. And finally, right mouse click and moving left and right zooms in and out. On my mouse, the middle mouse button is actually a scroll wheel that can be pressed like a regular mouse button. So I'm actually using the scroll wheel to zoom in and out rather than the right mouse button. So let's begin making some edits here. If you hold the space bar, the middle mouse button, you can move the mesh around. Now it's important to note that we are not actually editing the model. This is simply to make viewing the model and navigating things around and finding edges that you wish to cut a lot easier. So we actually have not changed anything about the model visually. In fact, if we press the three key and go to the 3D view, you'll see that it looks exactly as it did before. So this is what your model actually looks like. And the edit room, you can manipulate things around to your heart's content in order to make cutting and welding UVs uh, a lot easier. Let's start with the easiest object, which will be this base plate here. I'm going to zoom in onto one corner, and I'm going to press the C for cut on this edge. As I hover the mouse over this edge and press the C key, you can see that it turned red, and it extended the edge up to this edge in yellow. And it stopped there because we have a fork here and UV layout wasn't sure which direction to take on the fork. If we had a longer edge, and you'll see this later on in this video, UV layout will actually extend uh, 10 edges by default. 
but in this case it can only extend two edges. So we have marked the, this edge for cutting by pressing the C key. If you wish to unmark something, hover over the edge and press the backspace key. And you can see I have unmarked that. However, I really do want to mark this, so I'm pressing the C key again. And I'm going to move this around to the other corner and press the C key. I'm going to continue this with the other two corners. And once I have all the markings in place, with my mouse hovered over the shape in question, I'm going to press the Enter key to make those cuts. And you can see that all the corners have those cuts made. And with the cuts made, I'm going to press the D key. And I like to think of D as drop. And I'm going to be dropping this shell into the UV view. So D. Now I'm going to press 1 to go into the UV view. Previously it told us that there was nothing to see there. But now you can see that we actually have got a shell in here that we can continue editing in UV view. Before I do that, I'm going to actually drop the remaining shells into this space. So I'm going to return to the edit view. And we'll start with the easiest shells here. So the cube, I'm going to cut these edges. And one more edge along here, there, and press enter while the mouse is hovered over the shell, and it splits it apart, and D drops it. The next simplest shape is the cylinder here, so I'm going to split there, and I'm going to split around the top of the circular piece here. I mentioned earlier that UV layout will automatically extend 10 edges. And so you can see that's happening here. And I'm going to press C again. It extends another 10 in segments and two remaining. Pressing C again completes that. Now with this cut in place, this will actually remove the circular top completely away from the rest of this shell. And I do not want that. So what I'm going to do is backspace over that one edge. So now I'm cutting the top almost completely off, but not quite. I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. Now instead of pressing C three times to move around, I'm going to press Shift C. And this time in one swoop, UV layout extends my cut markings as far as it can. Again, if it hits a bridge, uh, or a split in the edit in the edges and it cannot decide which direction to go it will stop there but th since we have one continuous edge here it was able to move all the way around and as before up top I'm going to press backspace so that, that that edge remains connected and then press enter to commit the cuts D to drop that into the UV space the cone is probably the next easiest, and it's almost identical to the sphere. I'm going to press Shift-C here, and backspace to keep the base connected on one edge. Now we're going to get some trickier objects. The sphere is going to have to be split pole to pole at least once. So I'm going to press Shift C here. That puts the cutting uh, seam behind away from the camera view, assuming that our camera in our rendering program is going to be capturing this face. Uh, we try to hide the seams as much as possible when we're making UVs. You've probably seen in whatever your favorite 3D editing package is that a default spherical unwrap splits all of these 
triangles at the pole. However, if I press the C key and start marking these for cuts, UV layout by default is going to be extending these edges down into the main body of the sphere, and I do not want that. So what I'm going to do instead is to press Shift C along this edge and mark this top circle here. And now when I press C on these triangles, it stops when it hits this existing cut. And it will not extend the cut further. So now I'm just pressing C over each of these edges. And since I don't actually want these to be cut, they were just there as a buffer, I am going to unmark these with the backspace key. And that should do it. I'm going to, to repeat that down on the south pole. So I'm going to shift C and then cut these. And unmark all of these. Oops. Looks like I accidentally unmarked that. So again, I'm going to see as a buffer. And unmark those. And that should do it. There's all the cuts. And drop this shell. Leaving us with the toroid and the dodecahedron. Let's work with the dodecahedron first. That's probably the simplest of these two. I am going to cut around the pentagonal faces here, but I'll leave this connected here. And I'll cut around this pentagon face that these triangles make. So when we press enter now, we've actually cut the dodecahedron. So space, middle mouse button, and we can move these two shells apart. And if necessary, we, we could make further cuts here. But I don't think that's necessary. We can drop the, these two shells into the UV space. Just one quick word about the coloration that you see here. This uh, pale gray is the sides of the polygons that are actually visible. Uh, you can think of them as being the outside of the 3D shape. Whereas this purplish color are the sides that are quote unquote inside the polygon and not visible to any ray tracing in your program. They're just ways to tell the, uh, tell the, the shapes apart. So I'll press D to drop these two halves. And that leaves us with the toroid donut shape here. So if you try to imagine this shape in the real world, if you actually had a donut in front of you and you wanted to cut it apart in order to flatten it out completely, uh, the minimum number of cuts you're going to make are, is probably two, and you'll probably need to make even more. I'm going to do Shift-C around this backside ring here. Just confirm that it's gone all the way around. Looks like that it has. And I'm going to do a shift C on this inside ring, the inside of the donut. And so this is probably an area where we're not going to be uh, too visible with the scene. You know, you're probably uh, in your scene, you're going to be focused on the outside of, of the toroid. So with these two cuts, as the minimum number of cuts we need, I'm going to drop the toroid. 
Once we have all our meshes dropped into the UV space, UV layout immediately jumps over to the 3D view. So you can see here, we can see where we have made all our cuts on our meshes, and we see the uh, default gray color of the meshes. We're going to return to the 3D view after we finish flattening all of our meshes because the 3D view allows us to see where the distortion is visually from the flattening. So I'm going to press the 1 key to go into the 3D view here. So each UV space here is a square. The V direction is vertical, and that's how I like to remember it, V for vertical, and the U direction is horizontal across here and each one is measured from 0 to 1 and so that is a percentage so from 0 percent to 100 percent that is the reason why UV texture maps are typically square and will be, can be any size you want uh, so long as they are square so they could be 512 pixels by 512 pixels or Typically, powers of 2, we're going to go up to 1K, so 1024 or 2K, 2048. Um, and 4 and 8K are pretty common as well. And in some extreme cases, even 16K. But of course, the larger your texture map, the more memory your rendering program is going to have to take up. But the UV map is the same, no matter what size of texture map you have, whether it's as small as 512 pixels square or as large as 16K pixels square, it doesn't matter. The F key is F for flatten. So I'm just going to press and hold F while my mouse button is over this large base here. And you can see that that very quickly flattens this out completely everything is green and green is how UV layout indicates that the flattened mesh is distortion free not all of our meshes are going to be this neat so we will actually uh, cover the distortion a little bit later on in the video here's our cube I'm gonna press and hold the F key again there it goes and it finishes unwrapping and very similar to the edit room, we can press the space and middle mouse button and drag this up out of the way. Our cylinder here, I will press and hold the F key again. Very quickly flattens everything out. And that looks pretty darn good. Inside the UV editing room here, we can still use the cut and weld buttons. So even though I initially left these circular end pieces attached, I'm going to press C to cut them away from the body of the cylinder. And this allows me to demonstrate another flattening feature. We can press F for flatten. However, in this case, we have a very rectangular shape. It has four distinct corners. And as long as that's the case, with these four distinct corners, we can press R for rectangle. And you'll see that this time the flattening completely lines everything up vertically and is distortion free and completely flat rectangular shape. In order to re-weld these faces, I'm going to press the W key on this edge and you'll see that it marks the two edges that share that space in red. And press the Enter key to commit that operation. So they are now re-welded. That has introduced a little bit of distortion into the mesh. You can see that this is slightly blue here. And the more saturated the color, the more distortion there is. So this is only slightly distorted. But we're going to fix that up and remove that distortion. I'm going to move this shell out of the way to demonstrate another aspect of the weld tool. Let's re-weld this edge. Notice the two red highlights here. If we press the Enter key to commit this weld, 
it's going to stretch these two edges across the UV space, and that's going to be pretty terrible looking. With your mouse hovering over this piece here that was moved away, we can press the M for move, and it will automatically move this into place and bring it as close as possible to the edges that have to be welded. Now we can press the Enter key to commit this weld operation. Now our problem here is we have ended up distorting this part of the mesh and we have some UVs overlapping here. So I'm just going to press the F, hold in the F key and we're back to the original flattening that we had before. Here's our cone. I'm going to press the F key for that and it very quickly pulls itself out. Very nice. There we go. That's as good as it's going to get. So, so far we have had, aside from this little bit of distortion here when I re-welded, everything's distortion free. Everything is green. Here's our two pieces of the dodecahedron. Let's do these next. I'm going to press and hold F and press and hold F. So here, it's distortion free. This, however, is not. And this time it's red, not blue. Although you can see these two end triangles are slightly blue. So what red and blue means is that these particular pieces of polygon are sized differently in UV space than they are in the 3D world space. The mnemonic that I use to remember this is blue equals bigger. They both start with the letter B. So this polygon here, slightly bluish tint, is bigger in size than the polygons that are in the 3D space. And in fact, here where you can see distortion free, the polygons um, are in fact just slightly smaller than this polygon, this triangle here. Red, however, means that these polygons are smaller in UV space than they are in 3D space. And so the mnemonic I use for that is red equals reduced. Now in both cases, this means any texture map covering this area is going to have some sort of distortion. Uh, if it's blue and it's bigger, then the texture map is going to get stretched. And if it's red reduced, the texture map is going to be compressed. So the, our goal here is to remove as much distortion as possible while introducing as few cut seams as possible. But let's press C here to cut along there. And press F for flatten. And that's a little bit better. We still have a little bit of distortion. And this might, in fact, be acceptable. It really depends on uh, how much detail you want to be seen and you know, where the, your camera is going to be focused in 3D view. What I'm going to do is continue cutting and actually remove these pieces completely. Press F for flatten. And now this is as flat as these others and is distortion free. I'm going to press W on this edge to see that it lines up along here. So again, press the M key while my mouse is hovered over this shell, and it moves it into place. I can press Enter to commit that weld. Now I've got a larger UV island here that is distortion free. Let's press the W key here, and that fits in there. So M for move. Enter to commit the weld. It's introduced a little bit of distortion. And we'll just see where this lines up. Okay, that should be fine. M for move. Enter to commit. And I'm going to hold down the F key to reflatten this. And you can see now, although we had to introduce some extra cuts, we've got an almost completely distortion free mesh. It's just very slightly blue here and here, 
and because of that it's very slightly red here and here but really probably not enough to be worried about and that leaves us with our sphere and our toroid for the sphere I'm going to actually show a different type of flattening rather than holding the F key I'm going to press shift F and that is going to do something called a bloat flatten this is going to happen very quickly probably not going to really notice what it does unless you actually have a much more complicated mesh that you run this on. But what it will do is actually expand this into an oval shape and start calculating all the proper UV layout uh, from the outside of that oval shape inward towards the center. But since this is such a low polygon sphere, this is going to happen very, very quickly and you probably won't notice it. But Shift F, Bloat Flatten. Notice up here in the corner it says hold space to stop. So it's counting down one minute and it's going to keep trying to calculate and find the best possible flattening. And it's really not changing at this point. Uh, this is about the best it can do. So I'm going to press the space bar to stop this. If I hold down the space bar and the left mouse button, I can rotate the shell. So as you can see, with this particular type of cuts that we made, we've actually got quite a bit of distortion. Blue is bigger, so these polygons here are bigger in the UV space than they are in the 3D space. And the blue is very, very dark. With the dodecahedron, you could barely see the distortion. It's a very pale blue and a very pale red. But here, uh, it's about as dark blue as it's going to get, which indicates the distortion is quite severe. Likewise, the red reduced size distortion along the equator of the sphere is, is much, much more noticeable than it was with the dodecahedron. And also, we've got some overlapping polys here. These uh, triangles got flipped inside, and these are overlapping. Now, we can edit these things manually. But rather than doing that, I'm actually going to consider some extra cuts. And this is really where UV layout shines as a, as a product. It allows you to make experimental edits to your UVs very, very quickly. Quickly undo your operations and continue editing until you find the ideal number of cuts with the best possible distortion-free outputs. So I'm going to actually split this down this side, this edge here. And I'm going to do a bloat flatten and space to stop that and another bloat flatten on this shell, space to stop that. And what we have here now is probably something you've seen in atlases trying to show the shape of the world, uh, this is a very common projection to use. What we can do here is weld these edges. And another flattening option is the B key. This is the flattening brush. And you just kind of move the brush over the shell and it tries flattening in that area. And that is uh, sometimes very helpful with more complicated meshes. But you can see that we've actually got more distortion here. We reduced the uh, red distortion here uh, a little bit, uh, but we've introduced more blue distortion. So this is probably not the ideal type of cuts to make uh, for this sphere. What I'm going to do is re-weld these triangles up top here. By pressing the W. There it goes. Took a little bit of fussing there. Now, 
obviously this is making the distortion much more severe uh, as we stretch these polygons while welding them. And so the blue, the very dark blue has returned. But we're not going to keep it this way. Once these are all re-welded, we are actually going to continue editing this shell back in the 3D view. There we go. So we press the D key in the uh, edit view to drop the shell into the UV space. If we hover our mouse over the shell in question and press the Shift D, it's going to move it back into the edit space. So I'm now going to press the 2 key and we are back in the edit view. And you can see where we've uh, made our cut here. So I've got a cut that moves all the way around the outside of the sphere, save for these two edges here. And all the cuts that I made along the pole, of course, we re-welded those together. So what I'm now going to do instead is do a shift C on this edge. Notice that it stops here where we made our cut and a shift C on that edge. And I'm actually going to cut the entire pole off. I'm going to do the same thing down on the south pole. And enter to commit those cuts. I'm going to use the space bar and the middle mouse button to move this part of the shell away and just take a look around. It looks like everything is cut here, save for these two edges here. And we have cuts along here. If I press enter again, nope, it's not splitting it. Well, that's fine because I don't want it split. I actually want these two pieces to stay together. So I'm going to press D to drop. Oh, they were split after all. Okay, so D to drop each of those, and D to drop that. And again, with the edit view empty of meshes, it drops us automatically into the 3D view. So I'm going to press 1 to go to the UV edit view. And I'm going to press F to flatten that. Now, one other shortcut that you can do if we press the F key while the mouse is over an empty space rather than one of the shells, what you'll see down on the bottom is left mouse button to create a flatten box or enter to abort. So if I press enter, that simply goes away and nothing happens. But if I press F again and I draw a box around the shells that I want to affect, it automatically flattens them. Now this shell needs a little more flattening, so that's why it's uh, showing all this distortion. Let's hold the F key over top of the sphere, and it's chugging away at it. We could have done a bloat flatten here. That probably would have been faster. But I'm just pressing and holding the F key while this calculates. And it's just about finished. There we go. That's as good as it's going to get, I think. Let's re-weld these pieces together. So I'm going to press M to move. And then continue with W. And enter to commit that weld. F to re-flatten. W. M to move. F to re-flatten. And then somewhere in the middle here, W. Okay, that wants to weld to this edge, so I'm going to press M to move. It positions it into place. Enter to make that weld. 
And I guess on this side as well. W. M to move. Enter to make the weld. And I'm going to use the B key, flatten brush. And just try to clean that up a little bit. Looks like it's not doing anything. So we can leave this as is. We've got some much, much less distortion on the poles now. Just a little bit here on this one polygon. And likewise down here on the south pole. And we have some distortion here along the equator. And this may or may not be acceptable to you as an artist. It really depends, again, on how much detail you want to put into this and how much work you want to do. I'm going to leave this like this. Um, but uh, you know, feel free to experiment with other cut options. Uh, you may want to cut along the equator, for example. Uh, that is probably the most visible seam and the less desirable, but it would uh, probably get rid of all of this red distortion for you. Let's move on to our last shell here, the toroid. I'm going to use a bloat flatten on that. So shift F. And there, it's pretty much done already. So space to stop the calculations. And we can see here a very similar example to what we did when we first unwrapped the sphere. We have much more severe distortion here along these edges as well as a reduction distortion along the equator of the uh, toroid. And this is where the 3D view comes in. Now that we have everything flattened, we can press the 3 key to take a look at the 3D view. And now you can see we have nice green distortion-free flat flattening of most of our meshes. Only the sphere and the toroid has some issues. And you can see here that inside cut is where we have the greatest uh, distortion here. These, these polygons are bigger in the UV space than they are here in the 3D space. So this would lead to stretched textures. And out here on the outside of the toroid are the red distortions. So these polygons are uh, smaller in the UV space than they are here in the 3D space. So this is going to lead to stretched texture maps. So this is probably not desirable. We want to come up with uh, different cutting choices here to, to try to reduce this, this stretching here of the toroid. The sphere, on the other hand, this might be acceptable. Um, again, it really just depends on your uh, texture map and uh, what you're trying to show off the most. We still have some distortion here along the uh, equator sections. Let's fix up this toroid and then we'll uh, end the video shortly after that. So this toroid, I think, is probably best served by having the equator cut. I mentioned with the sphere shape that that is, may not be desirable, uh, given that this makes a very visible seam. So that's got it marked for cutting. Press the Enter key to split it in half. Um, and that certainly applies here to the toroid. This may not be desirable. But let's do a bloat flatten. And you can see how it pulls itself around into this uh, circular shape. However, the circular shape is almost completely distortion-free. There's just a little bit of distortion on the inside edge here. Slightly blue distortion around there. I'll press space to stop that. And I will do a bloat flatten here, Shift F. And just wait a few seconds. That seems to be all we need. It's as good as it's going to get. Space to stop that. So now we have two shells that are almost completely distortion free. The only downside being, as I mentioned, is that this seam is very, very visible. We can uh, try to weld these together. 
I'm going to move this into place and commit that weld. So any other uh, choices you make, you feel free to experiment. As I said, that's what makes UV layout really, really great is it's very easy to edit your UVs and test things out and it gives you a, a visual information as to where your distortion is. The last thing we do, I'll do before ending this brief tutorial is show how to pack all of these. All our UVs right now, our UV islands are spread out over several UV tiles and that's not ideal. Most of the time you want everything packed into one single tile. And for that we'll open up the pack menu. I'm not going to explain all of these options. I'll just cover the basic ones here. So our quality, fast, middle, and best basically tells UV layout how long it's going to think about packing. And with just these few shells here, they're pretty basic and simple. Fast will do just fine. Um, but best, if you've got a lot of shells, uh, maybe a much more complicated model with lots of small parts, you may want to click on the best button. Map resolution uh, tells UV layout uh, what type of map texture map size you're likely to use, and that will affect some of its calculations. So it defaults to 1K, so 1024 pixels square. But if necessary, you can increase that to 4K. Unfortunately, 4K is as high as it goes. It does not cover uh, 8 or 16K maps. It does go below, and you can go as low as 128 pixels square. I usually leave it at 2K. Again, that doesn't mean that your texture maps themselves have to be 2K. This is just a uh, a factor that UV layout uses when it's uh, calculating its packing. A more advanced option is the rotate option and I'm not going to use that but uh, you would just turn it on and set a number of minutes for it to calculate and choose one of the uh, rotation increments. It defaults to 90 degree rotations uh, but you can make it finer grained as little as 5 degree rotations. And this will add a lot of calculation time, so it's best used over, say, a lunch break or possibly overnight. Um, it won't take many hours, but it will certainly take many, many, many minutes. And the timer will reduce that. But I'm not going to use that here because, again, I've got a very simple model here. The bleed, if I expand that a little bit and do show shell bleeds, Let's just zoom in a lot closer on this edge. And you will see that the bleed is just a little buffer zone around each UV island. And you can make that bigger if you really want. I usually leave it at around uh, three or four. Uh, that's, that's plenty. Show tile coverage is this percentage value here. So it's showing us how much of a UV tile is actually covered by our meshes. So that's a valuable thing to keep showing. So that's typically what I will use is show shell bleeds and show tile coverage. Align shells to axes. When we pack this, um, it will try to rotate these shells a little bit just so that they are following the vertical and horizontal UV coordinate space and it will just try to fit that in along those lines and that again helps with texture mapping and keeps things a little simple. So with that said I'm just gonna click pack all and you can see it's done very quickly because again I have a very simple mesh here uh, but it has chosen this particular configuration. We'll zoom in a little bit. We have 65.3 percent coverage um, you can see here the uh, T-shape of the cube, uh, the rectangle of the cylinder, and the flat square here that is our base. Uh, that's where uh, they've all been rotated slightly, and that's the align shells to axes at work. Uh, so that uh, just makes for texture painting uh, much, much easier. And it's tried to align the other shells here, but they're somewhat 
more oddly shaped, of course. So uh, there's not a nice, even straight line that it can line things up with here. Uh, you're free to move these around about yourself um, and you know manually tweak a little bit if you like. Uh, but most of the time, you just want to leave it as is and save the OBJ file with the new UV layout. Let's just briefly return to the 3D view. That's under the display menu and clicking that button. And you can see almost everything is green, with the exception of uh, our slight distortion here on the sphere and on the inside of the toroid. In the 3D view, you can press the T key for texture, and that will actually change the coloration into a checkerboard test pattern. And pressing the minus key or the plus key uh, up beside your backspace key will change the resolution of the texture. So as you can see this is almost completely distortion free. Our checkerboard pattern is nice and square and uh, following in a straight line along the edge here and it's doing that for the cube and for the cylinder body and for our base. It's really nice. You can press the T key a second time, and it's a slightly more complicated texture map test pattern. And this is useful for looking at your distortions. So let's zoom in on our sphere, where we do have some distortion around the poles. And these lines should be nice and straight. Uh, but you can see here that they clearly are not. So this is the sort of compression effects uh, compression and stretching effects that you'll get with various distortions. So it allows you a preview of what to expect when you are uh, starting to texture map. And again, you can change the resolution. You want to make that even smaller. There we go. And that makes the distortion a lot more obvious. You can see the line bending here. And, uh, that's that's exactly the sort of thing that you want to try to avoid as much as possible. And in the cases of many meshes, especially very complicated organic mesh meshes, it's not going to be possible to completely remove the distortion. But you can eliminate it as much as possible with UV layout. And as you can see earlier on in the video, it's very fast as well. And with that, I will end this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. And I will look at some of the more advanced features of UV layout in a later video. Thanks for watching.